All right, everybody, welcome back to Creator Generation. This week, we are joined by Zach Deranowski. Zach, welcome to Creator Generation. And thank you for having me. I'm excited to be on. Hey, uh, Zach, you're a predominantly TikToker. Let's maybe me not stuff up the intro and you give me a quick intro of who you are and what you do. Sure. So my name is Zach. I'm originally from Canada. If you can tell, I don't have an Australian accent. I moved to Australia January 2020 to start medical school at the University of Sydney. I started social media like in May or June of 2020, uh, pri- primarily on TikTok, which then has carried over to Instagram. Um, but I'm a mental health activist. Uh, I'm a co-founder of a company called Mental Health Movement, which is a clothing line to start the conversation. We have a podcast called You Matter Most Podcast. We set up scholarships for students for mental health in the U.S., and we donate monthly to nonprofits globally. So keep busy, and the whole premise is around You Matter Most. Mm-hmm. So letting people know that they're the priority. You said medical school. Does that mean you want to become a psychiatrist eventually, or is it just – that would be an ideal situation, yes. But that's so far down the line. I think it'd be kind of naive of me at this point to say that this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. So we'll see. I never thought I'd be chatting with you guys a year ago. So yeah, well, that, <laughs> it's good growth. I mean, growth. We started in January, and you're at over a million on TikTok, um, and yeah, doing really well on the social. So yeah, tell us about that journey. Yeah, sure. So I guess I can give you a quick back story of me. So. Um, when I was 18, I failed out of college. My parents said move out. My dean said I couldn't do university, and I was just in a really bad headspace. Um, over the next five, six years, I did whatever I could academically to, I guess, prove my parents and my dean and all the people in my life wrong. So I guess the wrong approach to motivation, but it got me to a point where I was now a competitive applicant to apply to medical school, which was awesome. But I had a year's time before starting, so I was like, you know what? Um, this is before mental health stuff. I said. I'm going to put up my transcripts on social media and maybe someone will connect with it. And I just put my freshman year transcripts, which I had a 0.59 GPA, nine Fs and shared a little bit of my story. And I was never forget this guy from Vermont uh, in the U S reached back out to me in a direct message. And he said, he shared his story and he was vulnerable. And it was just, I was blown that social media could be used for so much good. Cause in my mind, it was just these filtered stories and filtered photos that were getting transactioned around the internet. No, I wasn't really part of that. So when I saw that, I was like, okay, okay, let's do something. So every night for the next four months, I would host an Instagram live every single night with a medical student, a resident, or a doctor from around the world. And I came to understand that there was this thing called a mentor, mentee, almost like a continuum where there was exchanging of knowledge and information and experience both sides. And the people who I inspired me, my mentors, they were much more willing to share their obstacles, adversities, their setbacks um, than the people who were on the mentees who thought this was just this linear trajectory. And if I have issues or failures, then I'm alone. Why me? So through that, I created a formula called vulnerability equals relatability equals empowerment, um, which I premise now with the mental health stuff. Um, I'm going to give you a full story. I apologize. Um, But so after I created that formula, a big test prep company reached out to me in the U.S. and they said, Zach, how would you like to travel North America and speak at pre-medical conferences about being a former college dropout and now applying to medical school? I was like, that's a dream come true. So I did that for about six months um, before starting medical school in January of 2020 here in Sydney. Then COVID happened. Then I had ACL knee surgery, which was my physical outlet at the time, was working out and playing sports. I went through a six-year long-term distance relationship breakup, which I didn't know at the time was my identity. Medical school was challenging. I couldn't go home, so I felt isolated. I didn't really have my real friends and family here. So all these things started hitting on me to like a breaking point, sort of like when I was 18, a similar breaking point. But I was more aware of it at the time than I was when I was 18, and it was more like, I'll just do me and I'll make it happen. That was my, no, I have, I have issues. I need to go seek support. So as a medical student here, it's free counseling services at the University of Sydney. And one of the things they told me was to journal my thoughts because personally, I'm an overthinker. And if I have a thought, it'll just keep reoccurring. It'll get me nowhere. And I was like, okay, I can journal my thoughts or I can just journal my thought on social media. Like I journal my transcript and maybe it'll help one person. So my friends were on TikTok. Um, It was an undersaturated platform at the time when I joined in May. Um, And I just shared it there and it snowballed. Um, And then that everything else I explained before took place. So it was more so through the vulnerability, relatability, empowerment, and being real um, has allowed me to resonate and create a community 
um, of people not feeling alone. That's amazing. That's awesome. Like, boom. That's such a such a awesome, powerful story. Um, like, why TikTok? Other than like, was other than your friends were on there, you're kind of like. Did you choose TikTok just because of that? Were you strategic in that? Or were you just like kind of at the time particularly was really known and still kind of wrongly is known as like the dance challenge kids doing, you know, dumb stuff platform. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what, what sort of drew you to TikTok? There's a few reasons. I could be tell you there was a strategic point of like it was an undersaturated platform and I knew I could grow or – had nothing to do with it. That's just a thing people with social media, if you want to grow, get on a platform early when the real estate's available, right? Um, one reason was, like I said, friends who are in the med space were already on there. But honest reason was on Instagram, I had this identity, right? This perfect student now who never messes up, who made this beautiful trajectory and now he's up here. He can't or my parents, or my aunt I haven't seen, or just people's perceived, even if they don't comment, like, or share, or, or even get involved, they the, the potential of them seeing it. And in my mind, I was like, okay, TikTok was like this safe space, because if a video goes viral on TikTok, it doesn't go viral to your family and friends. It goes viral to people who don't follow you on a thing called the For You page. So I felt like it was a place where I could spread a thought or my whatever was going on and – I wasn't, there was no preconceived notions of who I was prior to it. So yeah, I felt safer. That's the real reason. Which is, I, I guess, super important when you're being vulnerable, right? Like, and that's um, that's a, an, an interesting concept that underpins pretty much everything you say and do. But like, how do people be vulnerable online safely? And I mean, safely from like, uh, you know, a mental health perspective. Like, how do you put yourself yeah. out there and be vulnerable? Because that's it's a positive thing, but but without it um, being, I guess, potentially dangerous as well. Like, how do you do that? Yeah. How do you track the balance? Absolutely. I think there's a fine line. And just because uh, myself or other creators, which there's tons that are vulnerable on social media, are being vulnerable, doesn't mean you have to be vulnerable. Doesn't mean you have to open fully. I think it just it provides someone else the opportunity to open the door and reciprocate if they feel comfortable. Um, so I think only sharing what you feel is comfortable is the most important thing, not exposing yourself of all your scars and wounds in hopes that maybe one person will resonate, but you don't feel comfortable doing so. So there's a fine line and I think it's different for everyone. How do you find the line? <laughs> or, do you not have, or do you not have a lawn? You, you're just so burning out, out. <laughs> burning out um, regretting decisions, I guess. Um, I didn't have a line. I think it's through experience that I've learned what and what not to share um, because I felt the more I emotionally sometimes invested into a piece of content and the less it performed, the more, I guess, animosity I had to the platform or more like, I guess, emotional distress. Um, yeah, so I think it's more so experimentation. Yeah, that's what I ask about that in terms of creators. I mean, the good thing about content creation as it stands currently is it it's opened it up to everyone. Everyone can get on, everyone can be, you know, vulnerable, show themselves. But at the same time, there's a, another level of um, anxiety, right? like you've highlighted, like, you know, if a post doesn't do well, people, you know, overthink that. Did I get enough likes? People overthink that. So it's an interesting space, isn't it, where you've got this, great plat these great platforms to show yourself and people can connect with that but at the same time there are all these anxiety provoking elements to it yeah and that goes to the people who are listening to this now we were chatting before about trying to make this episode for you guys as practical as possible of things that can help you so i think that's a really important topic that i love to to chat about it's the irony and <laughs> you could have 10 million followers 100 million followers the bigger you get the bigger you expect yourself to grow it's not this i hit this milestone i'm happy it's more 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 and when is enough and what is really my purpose and how can i find that balance yeah i i, I can't remember who it was but i remember talking to a youtuber once who they were like you know when they started out they were like oh my god someone's got 250,000 subscribers and then when they got to 250,000 subscribers themselves they were like they're not satisfied with that they, yeah, they want more they, they need more how, um like i guess how do you take those external metrics um and and transcend them or put them aside as a content creator then and and 
Like what what can you do to to have other benchmarks potentially? Yeah. That... So I, I think when I first started, I would, I grew like eight hundred thousand followers in like three months, but I was posting like six to eight times a day. Um and I was like just like pumping videos out. Um I would like just batch create. So I would do it like two, three times a week. So it was efficient, but it was still a lot. Um with the whole goal of like, okay, I have to hit 100K by this, 200K by this, 300K by this, 400K, et cetera. Um, and that's really unhealthy because on TikTok or social media, you ride waves. You don't have linear growth. You either are riding it or you're not. And then you need to find a way to micro pivot or make the changes. And then you're back on a wave and then you're off and just always adjusting, refining. Um, I've learned that. Um, so now personally, I'll put either one video or sometimes two. I'll put up 10 videos a week. Um, so I'll create 10 videos. Um, that, that, and, that's, and that's low to me compared to what I was putting out, right? Um, where I would put out, say, if I put out 10 videos, I'll put out seven videos that I know are going to do well. They're very templated in terms of what I've seen previously successful. And then three videos where I am uh, micro pivoting and seeing how my audience reacts to it. So I'm always able to, I guess, not focus more so on quantity it's the quality with a splash of like salt and pepper and okay this one little gram of salt works and now i can go in i can template that so i'm never running out of ideas or burning myself out in the process and i'm not looking at the follower count anymore i'm sticking to 10 a week if it's a great week it's a great week if it's not okay um how can we adjust it with those three videos i, I, I like that approach it sounds it it sounds sustainable and clearly it is for you. And, and, um, it, but there's also like you, you're leaning into what works, um, what you know that drives the success metrics from a platform perspective, but you're also like allowing your space, your, your place to be creative and innovative with what you do. Um, are there like with those micro pivots, which you call them, are, are there any examples of things that you've tried yeah. that then have become part of your staple, I guess? Without a doubt. So I grew, like I said, 800,000 really fast. And then I plateaued for like two or three months um, because I wasn't changing. I was just keep putting up more. I'm like, why is it not working? It worked. So when you put out the same content, even if it's great content, either you get bored of it, which is bad because then you burn out as a creator or the audience is like, oh, it's just another one of Zach's, those videos. Okay, cool. I'll just swipe past it. And I think with TikTok, the biggest thing more than likes, comments, and shares is watch time, right? Percentage watch time. That's why it's important to always be micro pivoting. And a really good example of a super small micro pivot that's changed everything that I post or how it performs now is I do the exact same content now, but I'm doing voiceover. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to just the text and the audio, now it's my voice in the background. Um, and that just dramatically shifted. Now I'm at 1.5 million followers and I grew like 500,000 in the last six weeks, just off a simple change that I experimented once and really took off. I'm like, okay, this is something we can do. Awesome. And you, you've mentioned like burnout for yourself and potential burnout for creators a fair bit. And that is like, like a very hot topic that's always present for creators of any platform. Do you think it's a necessary, it's just going to happen? Like, is that just, we should accept that if anyone who's trying to create, you will hit that wall or other ways that we can learn from the, the, the path that has been laid out before us to sort of maybe try and avoid that, like not create, what, what was it? Eight videos a day. Um, even though you're seeing like the numbers tick up and it's exciting, but then it's not sustainable. Like, is there, like, are there real, like practical things that creators can do to, yeah. Not hit that wall. I think the emotional burnout stems from a point of comparing yourself to maybe your previous viral self or comparing yourself to other creators who are producing similar content. And you're like, how do they have so many likes? How do they get so many views? My comments the same. And you're constantly comparing you to you or you to them. Um, that's the first thing. Um, so focusing more on what your purpose is of your platform. So when I go out in Sydney, sometimes people recognize me and they'll be like, oh, are you the guy that creates mental health videos? Or sometimes they'll open up and there'll be a conversation. I'm just like, these small little stupid 15 second videos are creating real impact. And that's the purpose is that one person who connected or that one person who DM'd you who said your videos saved my life or your videos that I looked at all the comments and I know I'm not alone. So now I went and I sought therapy because of your videos. 
that's the purpose of social media is creating change in people's lives. If it's one, if it's a thousand, who cares? Knowing your purpose. And I think setting like, for me personally, specific quantitative like thresholds of 10 videos a week, or uh, there's a book called 24 six, which is an awesome book. I recommend people to read. It's about detoxing essentially one day a week from all of social media um, and finding whatever works for you and your schedule and stop comparing yourself to others and yourself, which is hard. But if you remind yourself of the purpose, that helps a lot. Brilliant. Hey, you, you mentioned um, all these people that do reach out to you, whether they DM or you, you know, you, you see them in the street. Do you, do you feel that as a, like, a, a, some level of burden of responsibility to like now that you create this content that is particularly so impactful on people's lives um it, it, it is there any sort of good or positive or negative sort of burden that that lands on your shoulders now that you are yes, people are almost relying on you for their sort of mental health um improvements or understanding yeah, the, the, it's both, right? Um, I guess bad in the sense that like you'll read, like I remember when I first started and videos were going viral, people were like, never stop making these videos. And I'm like, oh, never, never stop. <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta post, right? Um, but then that premise is back to what my, our mission is with mental health movement and myself. It's you matter most. So like I said, prioritizing your mental health first. You can't create good content. You can't be a good student or in a good relationship if you're just so hyper-focused on this one goal with a never-ending uh, continuing. You always have to do more and more. You'll never, ever reach that state of, I guess, happiness and accomplishment. Um, so I think, yeah, there is a sense of reliance, but reshifting that back to recognizing you got to take care of you first. Um, always let's micro pivot <laughs> cool. i like that phrase i think it's a great phrase i, I, I really like it i think it's um it's a, it's a really good thing for creators of, every, of every platform you know tiktok insta youtube whatever like it is it's it, to be constantly innovating um without completely changing direction is important so yeah I, I love that term and i think it makes it, it makes it really easy for people to understand hey I was, I was gonna ask i mean you 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 obviously um are looking to go down the, the uh pathway of being a doctor in, in a medical career um and now you've got this big sort of platform you've established in terms of communicating directly with people and, and making a difference there how do you think you're going to balance those two things up i think they kind of go together right um I have a platform which gives me a voice and hopefully it's being seen as being used for good. And the farther I get along my own journey, hopefully I can create more content that's more impactful and who knows where social media goes in five, 10, 15 years from now. So I'm just trying to do the right things and hope that the platform continues to grow and spreads the right message. Yeah. And do you think, I mean, like you said, you've cut down and you say you make 10 videos a week now. I mean, that's a lot more manageable on top of, you know, obviously a very hectic schedule as, as a student, um, and, yeah. and an entrepreneur, I guess. Yeah. So if I didn't explain this part of it, so one of my friends who I met in Sydney, just through sheer luck, he's a professional videographer who does drone videos and he's just incredible. So he's one of my best friends and we'll go, I guess, once every few weeks to like these spots where he'll do his drone footage and he'll record on my phone, like five or 10 really high quality, 15, 18 second videos in my camera roll. So I'm able to use, let's say I have 10 videos he recorded. I can reuse the same video three times with different messages, different quotes, different voiceovers. They're always going to be perfect takes. And I have 30 things of the content, meaning I have three weeks of content off of like one hour of shooting. Um, and me personally, it's just like, if you've seen my videos, I don't dance, I point to the sky. I can't ever make a mistake. Um, <laughs> but it makes it very uh, efficient for me to produce content and always being able to put out high pieces of quality content. Mm. So that helps. So it, I don't find that it's too time consuming to answer your question because I can make it very simple. Um, and I'll probably put out, I'll create five and I'll create five. Um, one at the beginning of the week, one and a half of the week. And then I'll just, it's only two times a week where I'm really building drafts. That's good. And that makes it more manageable. I think because a lot of people, especially when you hear people talk about TikTok, um, a lot of the uh, uh, gurus out there say, you know, you're going to be posting like, you know, five, six, eight times a day. And I think just the thought of that is so daunting <laughs> to so many people. And then they do, like they're just going out, they're constantly creating content. And um, 
like they'll end up in a cycle where they just feel burnt out and you know if they feel they're not succeeding or it's not getting the right amount of views they get depressed about it and it's just yeah it's it's one of those yeah. things right you've got to balance what makes sense to you and i think one of the reasons these gurus they say that i don't know if they explain it as well as they should it's about finding not your niche but your i guess your voice on social media what resonates with your audience so you're putting out 100 pieces of content in the first month and three of the hundred people really liked so then okay this is this is what i'll put out more of and then i'll micro pivot accordingly so i don't think that should be something you should ever do i don't recommend people posting that much but i do recommend a high quantity of micro pivots when you're first starting to find what sticks versus what doesn't and through that experimenting you're also becoming a better creator as well mm. so you're refining what you're doing yeah and, and even TikTok actually say and like they officially said like you know experiment when you first start to try and determine your voice right don't don't you know you don't have to be stuck in one rut you don't have to do this one particular thing just like you know the platform's there to help you find your voice exactly with i mean you've also looked i've seen you you're about to start a, a youtube channel as well or you've got that already sort of set up like what do you think that's going to be different there compared to TikTok, for example yeah, I've learned that YouTube's hard, right? <laughs> YouTube is, a, is definitely a much more difficult platform to grow, but it'd be silly of me not to like link people over to that because even last year with TikTok possibly getting banned in the States, that worry of like, okay, this thing could be gone tomorrow. Do you have your community over on Instagram? Do you have your community over on YouTube? How much of them? Would they be able to recognize you outside of TikTok? So I think that's important. Um, in terms of videos, I was thinking YouTube shorts when I first was like making the accounts, so, like, getting on the new feature of a new platform, whether it's IG Reels or YouTube Shorts, organic reach, etc. cetera. Um, but personally, now I want to create longer. I'm in the middle of making my first one, actually. As you saw, I don't have a video up yet. Uh, YouTube videos that are obviously more than 15 seconds that provide practical things. Okay, you feel like this. Now you feel hurt. Okay, what can I do about it? Um, what are some tangible actions I can take? So I want to create videos premised around the same point but longer with things that people can do to actually take control of their mental health. So like you've got the, uh, is it, you know, a foundation as such that does a whole, whole lot where, like what's the crystal ball for where this could all potentially go for, for you, Zach? So when I was 23, I had a life threatening blood clot, uh, in my upper, like my upper arm and my neck. Um, and they could have given me a drug a thing called a thrombolytic, which would have dissolved the blood clot immediately. And I would have no scar tissue. And right now I'd have no damage in my arm, but they didn't because they worried that there's a possible chance I get a brain bleed and die. And in my mind, I'm like, just give me the stupid thrombolytic and I'll have no issues. Like it's just fix it. So I used to always believe in like these quick fixes or solve the problem instantly and I want to pursue medicine because there's not a quick fix and there's not always a right answer. And I think that goes back to your crystal ball in the sense that like, there isn't a perfect crystal ball for me there. It's, it's just about going back to what I was saying about following the purpose and wherever the purpose takes me and say yes to the opportunities that align with the purpose, then go for it. Um, so that was a really awesome. rounded answer, but that's the truth. Uh, I've learned to be okay with not knowing. It's a, a great answer. Do you do you think like a lot of creators these days think they should have that answer now? Like the, there's been this is I don't know the second generation or maybe third generation of of digital content creators where things have been done before. Do you think people are coming onto these platforms with a set plan, whether that's good or bad? Of course, either a set plan or like I said, comparing yourself to others or really not knowing how other big top creators actually feel or actually what's going on in their head because you just see their content. Um, so that lack of realness in the social community, I think is is not as obvious on TikTok. I think it, TikTok's better for it. I have like a friend, you can post like on TikTok, like friends onlys, and you see some people who are just struggling and they're asking for advice. And it's just like these big millions of follower creators. And it's just like... Um, it's sad. Um, so I think it's important for anyone um, to answer your question. Hey, I want to, I mean, just talking about the times we're sort of in, I mean, it's been a pretty bumpy year. 2020 coming to 2021 has been a pretty bumpy year for social media with so many people coming onto the platform, so many people discovering new creators because <clears throat> obviously of the, uh, the environment we're in. But it's obviously been a very difficult year for like, globally for so many people and the mental health toll will play out for years after this, right? Um, 
what do you think like creators should be doing now to help you know like become more aware of that like you know talking to people like obviously you're doing you're being very proactive and you're talking about a lot of things there but should more people be talking about this kind of thing i think that it's like you said mental health is now a much more common thing to talk about um than probably in 2019 or before i think it's a lot to do with the fact that you're not in this nine to five, go, go, go busyness. You can't suppress the thoughts. It's people are making these really rash, life-changing decisions. It seems like the past year, year and a half, but they're not, they're just sitting at home and they're like, holy shit, I'm not happy or holy shit. Is this the job that I actually want to do the rest of my life? And they're making these epiphany realizations. So I think, um, the suppression of mental health is no longer there. I think speaking on it, it can never be too, too much. So the more you speak about it, the more you open those doorways for them to reciprocate, like we said, with the vulnerability. Um, and I think at this point, it's okay, we're speaking on it. It's like, how can we come together? How can we develop a support system? What are some things we can do to feel confident to say, okay, I went to counseling, or I went to seek mental health support without feeling this, this shame or weakness that is still associated with it, in my thoughts. Look, I mean, it is a fascinating area i mean it's a, a difficult area sometimes for people to talk about but I, I feel like i've seen a lot of creators starting to talk more about mental health more openly um and i think that is a good thing you know they are sharing their stories there's more vulnerability and i think that's helping a whole bunch of new creators come into the platform and a whole bunch of people generally just feel better about the situation they're in and how they're handling it and not feel so alone and i think that's one of the good things creators have done is help people not feel so alone about these things which is probably added to the popularity of 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 you know, this short form video space. Um, but I do think like sort of what is next, like how can creators take that next step to help more people um, and share more stories and get more people talking and getting more people being vulnerable, I guess. Well, I think it's the top creators are people that I guess inspire other people, um, go through them feeling comfortable to share their story of vulnerability that would probably be the biggest step they could take if they felt comfortable to do so. They obviously could share resources in their bio, et cetera, but I think the real power comes from the human connection of saying, okay, yeah, in 2020, I blew up on social media, but this is really how I felt. Um, let me know in the chat, guys, if you guys can relate. Holy shit, there's thousands of people that relate. And then there's a link in my bio. Okay, boom. So I think it's about just being comfortable enough to be as real and vulnerable as possible to create the change. At least that's from my perspective of what's worked for me. I know there's tons of other ways to do so, but that's just from a personal standpoint. But I also think it's worth noting that you did mention earlier, like it, it's kind of like you, you, it's each to their own as well. Like the creator have to be, you know, be comfortable with what it is they're going to share publicly and that you don't have to, if you're not comfortable putting yourself out there, you don't have to. And that's whether that's, um, you know how your mental health is or whether you have a new puppy um or you know like where you, in the world you live right like you can you have control i think and and maybe i don't, I don't know i feel I, i'd be interesting to see what you think but i, I it kind of like it feels like there's this overarching expectation upon creators that their their lives are expected to be open about everything mm -hmm. um or and or an assumption and i don't know if that if you you know if you think that's felt or that's just a perception i see but uh, I, I don't think it's it's accurate but i yeah i think a lot of creators coming into like new creators particularly lifestyle type creators or people who are personality based they feel like there is everything needs to be open to everyone yeah that so that's completely spot on so i i think one the creator feeling like they need to be as, as completely an open book as possible and they also the viewer thinking they know the entire creator story just because the creator's putting out all these pieces of content that they're not somebody else outside TikTok or instagram right so i think both sides and i think it goes back to like the content pro the creator or the viewer whoever you want prioritizing that they matter most and recognizing that like okay i don't feel comfortable putting out I just got in this new relationship or I'm actually struggling in school, no matter how much that could like help the other person out there. If you don't feel comfortable sharing it, don't share it. Um, recognizing what's comfortable for someone is could be completely different than the other person. Um, so just putting out what is good for you and that's it.
like in terms of like comfortable level. That's what I meant. Comfortable. Yeah. Awesome. Hey, Zach, I want to um, get you to cast your mind back to when you sort of started creating content, whether TikTok or, or you know, Instagram or any other platform. Like, did and you started creating content around mental health issues. Um, like, did you suffer? Did you have sort of go through that like imposter syndrome type, type thinking when you're like, who am I to create mental health content and put it out there? Like, I don't yet have the piece of paper on the wall. Um, no doubt you will. Um, but like, is there, did you feel that yourself or did, did you, you know, were you on the receiving end of any of that? Yeah. So without a doubt, right. Being a medical student and speaking on these, uh, mental disorders, there's a fine line of crossing one and two the people that inspire me. I don't want to lose that, that connection with them of like, who does he think he is? How can he like take over this space? He's only a medical student, right? And there was course and there still is there's still i still like when videos go viral I still get hate um but i know at this point um through like the true networks and connections that i've made through social media which i think is probably the most priceless feature you can get off social media it's connecting people around the world that inspire you um that they believe in what i'm doing um that it's making real lasting impact in people's lives still with the messages and the responses and um so knowing that it aligns with my purpose and always seeking other professionals, I guess, advice on content that I may think is controversial or too far. So I'm part of a lot of engagement groups that are like medical professionals. So if you have a thought where you're like, okay, I'm micro pivoting here, or I'm talking about this, you guys think this is too far, what's your thoughts? And just getting people that you trust, I guess, and believe in their thoughts um, helps a lot too. Um, so yeah, there's a fine line and I've been worried, but I think, and, and I think my video goes back to like, anyone can speak on mental health. Anyone can advocate through being vulnerable. I think you don't have like just opening up and sharing, whether it's anyone just sharing your story. Um, you don't, you wouldn't reckon it. You'd be surprised at how much you can make a difference um, in anyone's life. If you're just you, you're real to who you are. That's awesome. Hey, um, you mentioned you still get hate, you know, like yeah, probably the bigger, the bigger the creator is, the more hate probably comes their way, which is a, a whole nother issue with human psychology, but how do you deal with hate? Like, how do you deal with it? Well, when I first was growing, I was in a really bad headspace. Um, one, so hate hurt more. And two, I wasn't used to growing because I wasn't social media before. So I thought at first, um, it was really hard. <laughs> I took all them to heart, right? I would see a hundred comments. I scroll through, oh, there's the one that's calling me out. 99 I ignored that say these are great, right? You it's the human psychology, I guess, behind it. Um, so over time, this may sound bad, um, but I look more so now at like the trends. So if there's like a thousand and I have like 980 good comments and 20 bad comments, okay, I'm on a good thing. I don't read into comments as much as I used to. Unfortunately, I don't read into good comments as much as I used to, because if I read into the good ones, I'm going to read into the bad ones a hundred times more. So I look at it as a trend and I try not to get bogged down in the minutia because i can't i have other, a bunch of other things going on too and um it really took a toll on my mental health as well when i did do that so like for a small uh, new creator do you think that approach is is also transferable mm. or would you have what would you have asked me there yeah that's a good question um if you're a small creator with like a small sample size i guess it's harder to like have that experience and being able to use that quantitative data. I think if it's a smaller creator, it goes back to what you're saying about sharing what you feel comfortable sharing. So if you're at hundred percent, you share 20%. Okay, that's good. I'll share 25%. I'll share 30% until you get to this point where you, okay, this is as far as I'm going to go at 75% and people are receiving it a certain way. So I think it just, Maybe gradual, um, as opposed to just being completely open from day one. Yeah, and so, I, yeah, and I guess does that mean at some some point there when you're starting out, you just have to back yourself, and, like and uh, and belief is is in yourself. And um, I know that's a potentially a wishy washy thing, but you got to have some wholehearted belief in what you're putting out there. Is but and that goes a hundred percent that goes back to what we said like you can get caught up in the views the likes the plateauing the trolls but if it if it aligns with your purpose then 
you can always fall back on that. So a purpose at one follower, a purpose at 10 million followers, it's the same thing. If you're following your heart and your purpose, like we were saying, then I think you won't get astray. Easier said than done. Much easier. Said than done. And and how do like like maybe last like last area because it is it's, it keeps we keep coming back to when it's underpinning everything really. How do you how do you stay? How do you identify and stay on? How do you identify your purpose and stay on track with that? Like, is there a simple way to identify it? Yeah, people always talk about follow your purpose, follow your passion. Okay, what's my purpose? What's my passion? Right? Like, I think that's much harder to find than just continuing on once you have it. So for me, how I knew I wanted to do medicine or like just help people, I was like, it wasn't like, okay, this is the one thing I want to do because I have good grades. It's no, these hundred things I don't like. So I'm left with this one. So I think it's about micro pivoting your life or pivoting your life and find, okay, I don't like this. I don't like this. Oh, I kind of like this. Oh, why do I like this? Oh, cause I'm really good at this and it's helping this or it's doing it this. That's my passion. Right. So I think it's through experimentation, just like it is with content creation, where you can find your, uh, who you are and what you want to do. Sweet. Hey, um, Zach, we're running out of time as Fred pinged me in the background. And, but um, we, we do this thing every week where we ask our guests and we, we, where in the internet rabbit hole have you been down lately? Where has wonderful, weird or inspiring place has uh, any of these wonderful content platforms taken you? Uh, yesterday I was checking my spam email, um, and I keep getting emails from sugar daddies wanted me to post TikTok content saying I can get paid big bucks. So I almost had a collab with sugar daddies X you matter most, but I don't think that's going to come into fruition anytime soon. Wow. I didn't expect that. That's, um, <laughs> very interesting. There you go. <laughs> that is a distinctly unique rabbit hole to go down. Fred, what about you? Have you been anywhere? Yeah, in the I, interwebs lately uh i've uh been looking at a lot of uh is it, is it charisma on command uh, videos the ones from the youtube channel um having a look at some of this stuff uh yeah i got sort of stuck in a rabbit hole of that um looking at all charisma the charisma on command charisma on command yeah they're just basically mm -hmm. tips from you know what to do in a conversation how to talk with authority how certain people famous people talk and things like that just it's, it's actually a really good channel um a variety there, but um, yeah, I've been down there just watching the successful traits of different people and how to get certain things across more clearly and that kind of thing. Mm. And mm. Uh, what's a top tip from that, Fred? Oh, mate, they would just put you on the spot. There would, no, there's too many. I think they do when they did the <laughs> breakdowns, it's pretty interesting. I think I got to there from a previous one I talked about was like um, a day in the life off for the successful yeah. people. Yeah, that's how I got to got into that channel, and uh, yeah, it's interesting. Day in the life of Elon's Twitter habits. Mm. <laughs> How about you, Ant? <laughs> oh, look, it's uh, very aligned with what we do. It's um, And we've been watching it for a while, but I, I sort of tuned out for a bit and dived back into uh, a podcast, Creator Economics, which is uh, all about Creator Economics, which is co-hosted by Reed. I'm going to get his name, last name wrong, but Dushner, Dushner, Fred, correct me. Uh, He's the manager for Mr. Beast. Yes, um, but it's Creator Economics, and it is—it's a very interesting. The um, co-host on that is forget I forget, which is terrible because he's also super interesting. Um, I think it's Blake Blake Robbins. Anyway, they talk all like they—they they sort of talk about really openly about not just Mr. Beast, Mr. Beast sort of uh, channel and how they they run it, but also a whole bunch of other things around the creator economy. So that's um, sort of, I haven't been there for a while and went back and went back through the back catalogue. Pretty interesting. So yeah, a bit nerdy in terms of the creator ecosystem. That's really cool. But, yeah. but it's really it's really good, really insightful. It is so, a good podcast, uh, yeah. Definitely check it out. Mm. I mean, listen to Creator Generation before, <laughs> like first, um, <laughs> if you've only got like a bit of spare time. But if you've got a little bit more after that, go check out Creator Economics. They kind of know what they're talking about as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, anyway, hey, um, Zach, that's been super helpful and, and super interesting. If you had one thing to like leave people with, what would that be to round this this episode off? I love that question because it puts me on the spot and it's like, <laughs> what's the perfect thing I can say? And I don't have anything perfect. So I'll just fall back on my quote, you matter most. And that aligns with your purpose, that aligns with social media, that aligns with whatever you want to do in life. Always prioritize you, find who you are and 
you'd be surprised at how far it could take you. Ah, uh, and you had the perfect answer. <laughs> hey, Zach Daranowski, thanks so much for hanging out with us on Credit Generation. It's been a blast. Thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate it. Bye, thanks, guys. Man. We made the generation. Look on the mic.